All right, this is the full kit minus this Jackery adapter and a few extra pieces of hardware. So this was originally a tri-fold solar panel. So this folded back on itself and it all was able to fit in that box. Comes from Overland Solar. It's definitely outdated. It's probably at least eight years old. And after stripping, everything from it including handles hinges uh, stands this is everything here even the charge controller I took off of it it was mounted with uh, adhesive to the back of this but I don't need it because the jackery that I use has a built-in charge controller these were just like um, specific mounts the, the previous use for this was on a boat it was just a little bulky and they didn't really get the full use out of it so they gifted it to me which is extremely nice thank you Neil so this is old mounts, hinges, carrying hook, and these extend so you can angle the panel. And I didn't need any of that and I wanted to reduce as much weight as I could. This is a half channel, like a full one's here, half is here. You'll see later, but with the size of my box, I uh, needed as much clearance as I could, so I went for the smaller one. And just as a visual, this is mounted in here, slides in and you can basically mount this anywhere. And these uh, mount on the sides of the panel. And I guess one reason why I completely disassembled the panel was because I'm not doing this orientation. I'm doing this orientation. These struts will be mounted to my roof rack and then will be attached along the sides here with these uh, spring nuts. Another thing is that these all used to be connected. I did have to remove um, the wiring on a few of them. This will be connected like this on the top. And then we'll come back in here. And this is the remaining hardware after cutting the wires. I need to use a soldering gun that my friend has and I can't do it maybe for another week or so, just when he's available. And I'll have to solder these back onto the panel, which is, is relatively easy. You just need the equipment for it. I tried this out in the triple fold orientation on a sunny day, and I actually had the most input that I've ever had into my Jackery. It was about 75 watts with a typical 120 AC outlet, like in your house, it gives about 60 watts input. And with your car, 12 volt charging is about 45. So I, I was pleasantly surprised on how efficient these, thing, these things are. These are a little more robust than I probably would have went with. It actually fits extremely well in this orientation on my car because not too many panels have this width. It's about 16 and a half inches by 22. I'm only doing two panels. These are each 40 watt panels. So I think that um, 120 was a little overkill. So I just went with 80 instead. This is a close up of a few of the components. This is the backside of one of the panels. And as you can see, it has the wires where I snipped them. I just need a soldering gun, collect this extra solder, remove these wires, and then reroute these to have um, one wire coming in from the other panel and then the other wire going to the adapter. So this is the adapter. These are called SB50 clips here, and it's a SB50 to a eight millimeter, and this fits into my jackery to charge. That's the uh, solar input, and then this goes to the panel. Going over to the top of the car, I ended up moving the box over to accommodate the size of the panels, and I decided to put them on my driver's side. Just because in my setup for weight distribution it made more sense to shift the box over if I have not only myself driving, but if I have some extra weight with the cooler positioning in my car as well as some extra gear, it made more sense to even the weight out. But one additional thing um, I had to purchase, uh, I got these on Amazon. They are M6 bolts. And I ended up getting one that was slightly too long, so I will have to cut them. But these slide right into the racks. This is a Thule Wing Bar Evo, I think. And slides right in. And this is where those channel struts will mount, but I'll show you why I have to cut them. 
so if this is going on here and I bolt these on, uh, the panel will sit flush on the edges and this comes up a little more. This is actually the shortest size that I could get. So I will have to take a little more than a quarter inch off the top. I'm trying to beat the light right now. Got about 30 minutes left. But just finished cutting these two size. Cut about that much off. That's standard. That's the one I just cut. Uh, by the way, I already spaced um, these racks out enough where they would be the appropriate distance in between the holes of the channel strut. Some gunk in there, pressure to wash it out. I do need to leave some space here for this to open this way. You can open it both ways, but I'll mainly be accessing it from the other side, given that it's further away from the driver's side now. M7. So for mounting bar to the rack, we'll be using these washers. These didn't come with the Amazon set. All this did. This is uh, some smaller washers in there that came with it. Lock washers that I will be using and uh, nuts. Should have thought of this before. And this is gonna be a temporary installation just for the next few weeks because I still need to solder those last components but I think what I will do is put a little bit of Loctite on these bolts just to make sure they stay a little more secure on the roof it's gonna see a lot of wind and vibration and it's a car so can't really can't really get around that uh, this will also be something that I'll probably check along with my racks every 500 to a thousand miles which I would likely say is a, like every trip I take So with these, I just loosen them to the thickness of this where they rest. You can actually just turn them sideways and they slot right in. It's gonna be interesting on how to really tighten this down at the end. But these springs will compress in, kind of keep it locked while I play with it. I just tried to reach inside my car for that, that was awful. I think that looks pretty clean. <laughs> One thing I did notice right after, it's my first time installing these, is that the only way this can fit, and I guess the way I planned it, is that it goes through the mounting holes. But the spring also does too. Oh. This wire obviously isn't connected. This will eventually be connected to the other solar panel. The adapter will be connected to this, and I will route the extender cable, which I think is about 12 feet. It's gonna go underneath the rain guards here, and the window will be cracked slightly all the time, so it'll just be able to run through there. I'm thinking about making a custom plastic piece that can be lodged in the window that has like a little hole for the wire to run through. But likely I'll only set this up and have the wire running through when I'm not underway. This was the problem from before that I mentioned is that these springs that are attached to the slider nuts um, end up coming through. Likely cut the springs and lock tight everything. I ran out of light last night, but I did end up Cutting the springs off. Kept the bolts for the panel the same size because they can just go right through. I ended up just temporarily taping the edge of these with electrical tape. 
and this is the side that had all the mounting holes from the previous setup and obviously this side's clean so orienting this way these have to be close to each other so this one can on the back but same with this one just uh electrical tape i ended up putting the watertight covers back on and electrical tape again and just zip tied this temporarily to the side so the wire's not flapping around. Now it's on to bolting it. When I did cinch everything together, it shifted the rack slightly and uh, almost created like an off center for the box and everything else. So I'm gonna lock these in place first. Stupid mistake on my part, but. All right, got the panels up nice and rigid. Panels aren't really cinched down too. Respaced them, retightened down, just to make sure that the uh, locking washers inside the channel um, are aligned perfectly 90 degrees. Because if these are spaced incorrectly, the struts they aren't able to turn 90 degrees and not fully locked in. Besides the last few things, I'd say soldering that's going to come in the next week and a half to two weeks when my buddy's available, and on that final installation. I will put some Loctite on both sets of bolts, not only the rack to the struts, but also the struts to the panel. If you want to follow along with any other videos on my channel, please subscribe. I am currently building a, a second version to my conversion inside my car. The first one is more of a prototype to get the dimensions and all of the space for storage in the car that I could. And then I went back to the drawing board and started modeling on a program on my computer, Fusion 360. And I pretty much finalized my design and I'm ready to build. So I think that should be done likely within the next few weeks too. And I'll post a video on it, but super excited. It's, uh, it's gonna look a lot better than what I currently have. It's gonna be a good addition, to say the least. But if you wanna follow along with any videos, again, subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, Drop a like, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, not only for this, but anything else, uh, throw them down in the comment section. Thanks for watching.